Okay, gang, uh, Ms. Lear has a really good question. I want to answer it, and I want to post it online so that you can see the answer to the question. A couple things to keep in mind. We're obviously working in Unit 7. Um, your Venn diagram will help you with what you need for the paper. It will provide you with some of those evidence evidences. So, too, will the um, WebQuest and the PowerPoints. And she's looking at how to source some of these things. So, if you come down here, here's a sample outline. All right, uh, click on it. It opens up for you. Don't forget your name, Miss Messick, then my name, and then this is hour two, and the turn in date for everybody except for seventh hour is 9 28 14. Title of your paper is Unit One Summary. That should be centered up over the middle. And then on your introduction, as you're answering these questions, make sure that you are creating a paragraph rather than just the answers to the questions. I do not want to see this in a non-paragraph form or bulleted. So then, after you write your paper, you're looking for major contributions to ancient civilizations. This dot, dot, dot right here, you need to fill this in with three items that you think are important that ancient civilizations gave to government. Provide evidence for them. After that evidence, you're going to need a source that goes in parentheses. For example, if you use a class lecture, okay, then that evidence will be sourced to class lecture. Or if you use a Hammurabi Code DBQ document, then you can just put HC DBQ document, whichever, A, B, C, however it works. If you use the WebQuest, go ahead and cite it to the British Museum WebQuest, and we'll walk you through all of that. Once you finish your body paragraphs, this conclusion is simply fill in the blank. Again, remember, fill in the dot, dot, dots with what you think is appropriate, and then fill in the blanks, and you have your conclusion written. Make sure to change the um, font to a black color so that you obviously are not caught cheating. Then when you scroll down, you have a works cited. Here's what it looks like. This is the Venn diagram citation, and what we're going to do now is we're going to show you how to cite the web quest. So, um, Ms. Lear, which web quest do we want to go to? The textbook. the textbook. Okay, so we'll jump to the textbook. Um, I'm going to go ahead and type that in up here for the sake of time. Pearson success login. Uh, we're going to log in. Username and password, go ahead and use your own. It should be world history 2014 20 slash 2015. Password is student1. Click on the student edition. If you're having trouble logging in, make sure to control click and allow pop-ups. All right, once you're into the book, um, we're just going to want to page over here from the cover so that it provides us. And I'm going to go double page here so you can see kind of what we're looking for. So we'll go to the next page. Um, here are the authors right here on the top left-hand side. Um, so what you're going to get then is the Elizabeth Gaynor Ellis and Anthony Essler. Those are going to be the authors that you're going to fill in to Son of a Citation Machine. You can get to Son of a Citation Machine by typing in Son of a Citation uh, into your Google search. Click on Son of a Citation Machine. We want the MLA format. Uh, we are actually with our textbook. We're going to go ahead and source it as a book. Author uh, is, and we'll go back to our textbook link here. Whoops. Let's try this one. Uh, Ellis Elizabeth. And she would obviously come first. E-L comes before E-S. So go back to Son of a Citation Machine. Uh, Elizabeth, spelled kind of funny. Uh, and then you're going to go plus one author. And we're going to go Anthony Essler. Book title is World History. Um, the volume is going to be Missouri. Uh, oops, check that. The edition is going to be Missouri. The page numbers that we use, you just enter the page numbers that you use. Let's say we're using page number nine in our introduction. Uh, 
what is the city let's go back and look at our page to figure out what is the publishing city um, let's see if I can find it down here probably gonna need to zoom in just a hair looking on this page copyright uh, Pearson Education Incorporated There it is right there, Upper Saddle River, New Jersey. It's kind of the weirdest name for a city ever, so it should be hard, easy to memorize. Uh, so Upper Saddle River, New Jersey. Whoops. Common New Jersey. Uh, the publisher is Pearson Success Incorporated. And the year that it was published is 2011. Let's go double check that to make sure. Yep, see, copyright 2011. All right, so we minimize. Um, and then the chapter title, uh, when you're looking at that, is um, Ancient Civilizations, I believe. If that's not quite correct, just double check it and make sure. Then you click Make Citation. Here is your citation. Notice that in the parentheses it will be Ellis and the page number that you use. That goes in your paper. Then you're going to copy the citation, go back to your paper, and on your works cited then you're going to go ahead and add that in. Give me just a second to open the live paper and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, here we are back at the live document. Um, we're going to hit control V because we've already copied that. Then it's going to give us our um, citation here. Notice that my name is Daniels. These works cited should be in alphabetical order, Ellis, D, E. Okay, so we're naturally there. In order to make the formatting correct, you're going to put the cursor at the back of the second line. You're going to hit backspace. You're going to hit enter, and then you're going to push tab. And that's going to make it the correct formatting. Now, the last thing that we need to do, obviously, is highlight all of this. We're going to make it black. Okay? And we are going to make it, just like our song said today, double space, don't forget the spacing. Okay? So that is the works cited for the textbook. Um, stay tuned, and we'll get you going on the web quest as well. All right, uh, I got some good questions here in third hour. I wanted to go ahead and add them to the video. Um, one of the things that we talked about is obviously sourcing a website. So if you go to the home page, um, we're going to scroll down here. We can go back to the links for these websites. For example, here's Mesopotamia. Um, we can click on this. Um, and then, okay, so here's our Egypt web quest, for example. Click the link. Should be going there. Not sure why it's not. There it is. Click the launch. Okay, when you're here, you're looking for some key information that you're going to want to put into the son of a citation machine. So, for example, here's the 1999 copyright for this website. If you go here, we're going to type in son of a citation again. Should pop up for us in our memory. We're working with MLA. And we are again going to be citing a website. All right, so article title. So let's go back. Here's our article title, Ancient Egypt. Author. All right, let's go back and see if we can find an author. All right, let's go to the staff room and see what we can come up with. Um, resources, descriptions, mummification, educational goals, glossary, writing. Um, down here, you can't quite see this, but it says the British Museum Education Department. So it's going to be si sourced to an education department. So um, here is a probably a contributor or an editor. Um, and then the last name we're going to put British Museum Education Department website title uh, again we're looking for British Museum well the British Museum see where that comes from got the the publisher is going to be the BBC Horizon program 
display the URL. You can if you would like. If you don't, it makes your citation machine a little bit cleaner. All right, so here's the link. Control C. Go back. Paste. Control V. It was published in 1999. The day we accessed it is 2014. Today is September 26, and we click Make Citation. It gives it to us here. Again, we're going to copy, so you click Copy. Then you're going to jump back to your paper. I'm going to drag this over here for you. should be in another tab, um, and you scroll down to your Works Cited page. And very simply, you're going to hit Enter, Backspace, Control-V should paste it right in there for you. Now notice this is obviously in the not correct format so you're going to want to put your cursor here at the beginning. You push backspace, you hit enter, you click tab, and your works cited page needs to be in alphabetical order so I'm going to control X that cuts it. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to control V that pastes it and I need to hit enter here and backspace to make it clean. All right, so, as you can see, we're building this works cited. This should be linked directly to your website, so you can go in and see this today if you need an example of this. Um, it should be very, very simple. Okay, so the next question that came our way was how to do the introduction. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump in here, and I'm going to change the font color to black. Uh, how does the domestication of plants and animals change history? Well, the most important thing to me is that I obviously have a food surplus. I like food, um, so I might throw out a question of how do you like eating at McDonald's? Uh, obviously, this is a question, um, and it is my grabber. All right, then what I want to do is I want to get into the domestication of plants and animals. So. Um, we're going to say when people started taming animals and growing plants, it made life easier for them. If I could type, that would be more helpful. Uh, what does the Neolithic Revolution allow people to do? So then I'm going to answer this question. A good rule of thumb is to answer these in case, right? Because that's what you practice in English. Supposedly it's good for you. All right. So it made life easier for them. What does it allow them to do? Once people had a food surplus, they congregated. Okay, so as you can see, once people had a food surplus, they congregated in ancient societies with specific jobs, arts, architecture, and social structures, and began to create writing styles. The nice thing is that this comes right out of my class lecture. So you can put Daniel's lecture, and that's an easy citation for you. Um, the next thing that you're going to want to do is go ahead and copy my claim uh, if you would like. If you'd like to write your own claim, the bottom line is it needs to talk about government, religions, and overall well-being of society. The nice thing for you is that all we're going to do is change that to black text, bada bing. There's my introduction. Here's my claim. Here's my roadmap, government, religions, and present day society. That should lead us right into the body one mini claim. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. For the next question that I got from Ms. Skelton, thank you, Ms. Skelton. Uh, major contributions of ancient civilizations to government should be things that you think are interesting. I believe she thought that a theocratic government was interesting so we're going to say to government are theocracies uh, women pharaohs I bet she went ahead and chose that and um, we're going to say let's see hereditary rule maybe Uh, and obviously that doesn't need to be capitalized. So that would be how you complete that mini claim right there. Now that it's my own, I'm going to want to go ahead and change it to black text. Uh, it's a new paragraph, so it needs to be tabbed over and formatting set. Now you're going to want to provide three pieces of evidence from class sources, website, PowerPoint, or textbook to explain each one. So a piece of evidence 
to explain perhaps a theocracy could be something like this. Egypt had a pharaoh who was a god on earth. This comes from the, we can source it to the PowerPoint. We'll call it Egypt PowerPoint. Uh, period. So then on our Works Cited page, we're going to need to go back down here, create another one of these for the PowerPoint, and it is a website. Use Son of a Citation Machine, go through and use all the information. The nice thing for you is that it's already done right here. Here is everything that you need for the website. The only thing you're going to do is you're going to control C. Uh, it's going to be right in there right? and control V to paste. Here is the Egypt PowerPoint right here. So again, if you have any questions, feel free to email me um, and your papers are due on Monday for everybody except for seventh hour. You guys are due Sunday. Hopefully these are outstanding in their formatting and we're getting 85% on our rubrics.